Hello and welcome to this GCSE Chemistry explanation video about alternative methods of extracting metals. In this video, I'll take a look at why we need these alternative methods. We'll take a look at two methods in particular, phytomining and bioleaching. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at how those methods work and then we'll finish by taking a look at some good things and some bad things about these processes. Humans use metals for a huge variety of things, from building materials to vehicles, from pipes to wiring. We get these metals from the Earth's crust, but we don't find them just as the pure metal normally inside the crust. They're normally in types of rock referred to as ores. Now, the ore is a rock that contains some metal compounds within them. And these compounds are things that are normally ionic compounds where there is a metal bonded ionically to some non-metals. So with iron and oxygen, copper and sulfur combined together to make these metal compounds that contains the metal that we want. Traditionally, to get these metals out, we first of all need to create a mine. Now, a mine involves digging the rock from under the ground and then moving the rock to somewhere where it will be processed and then disposing of a large amount of rock once we have finished. Having separated the metal compound from the rest of the rock, we need to separate the metal itself from the non-metal that it is bonded with. Let's give an example of iron bonded to oxygen. To do this, we have a variety of options depending on what the metal is. You learn more about this in another topic. But typically, this will involve something called smelting, where something more reactive than that metal takes away the oxygen, for instance, or we could also use electrolysis or possibly a combination of both in order to maximise the purity of the metal that you are extracting. In order to carry out these processes, we need to use a lot of energy and expend a lot of resources, and this costs money. And so to make it financially viable, we need to have ores that are rich in the metal that we are trying to extract. And these are referred to as high-grade ores. High-grade ores are said to be rich in the metal compound that we are trying to extract from them. Or to say it differently, they have a high concentration of the method that you want. As with a lot of resources that we get from the Earth, these are finite, which means that they are present in a limited supply. And so we have however much that we have now, and it's not being replenished, and so this amount will gradually decrease and ultimately run out. An example of where this is particularly pressing is with copper. The demand for copper is increasing all the time in terms of the copper that we need for, for instance, electrical wiring, whereas the supplies of high grade ores of copper are dwindling down to almost the case where there are none of them left. And so therefore, we need to seek alternative methods of extracting metals that does not rely on us having high grade ores. And such things as low-grade ores do exist, and these have got a lower concentration of the metal that we want. And so, in order to make this a financially viable process, we can't use those traditional methods of mining and smelting, because we just don't get enough metal back to make it worth the expenditure in energy and money. And so, two examples that you need to know about are called phytomining, which involves the use of plants, and bioleaching, which involves the use of bacteria. These methods of metal extraction have the advantage of being able to operate with low-grade ores and still being able to make us enough money to make this financially viable, whilst also not carrying some of the disadvantages associated with traditional methods of metal extraction. For instance, they neither of these require so much energy to make them run. The process phytomining takes its name from the Greek word phyto, which means plants, and the English word mining. And it refers to the fact that we are able to extract the metals using plants. 
To start this process, we need some source of low-grade ores. Now, it might be that we've got some waste from quarrying or the leftovers from processing of high-grade ores, and we want to plant plants on this, or it could be that we have some type of contaminated ground where there are trace amounts of metal compounds, for instance, copper, present in the soil. And so what we do is we plant some plants that have the ability to take up these metals in their roots. So first of all, we plant the crops and the sun shines and it rains and these ions are absorbed by the plants from the soil, which is being treated as a low grade ore because it has a very low percentage of copper. And so the copper ions move into the roots of these plants and this accumulates, it builds up over time whilst these plants grow. After a while, what happens is the plants are harvested and then they are burnt. And this ash that gets produced when the, once the plants have been burnt is more concentrated in terms of the copper ions. The plants themselves have got a low percentage of copper, but once you burn most of the material of the plant and it turns into carbon dioxide, what is left in the ash is a higher concentration of copper ions. And from here, the ash is mixed with sulfuric acid and that reacts together to produce copper sulfate solution. At this point, we have a couple of choices. We can either separate the copper out from the copper sulfate solution by reacting it with iron. Iron is more reactive than copper, and so it will displace the copper from the solution. And this is particularly good if you are using scrap iron instead of paying to extract fresh iron for this process. That saves money and resources. Or we could do electrolysis, which is where we extract the copper from copper sulfate using electricity. Or we might use a combination of both. Whichever final stage you choose, you have at the end of this got copper out of a low grade ore using plants. Bioleaching uses bacteria to extract copper from low grade ores. The first thing that you need to do is source your low grade ores. This could come from a variety of different places. An example would be the leftover rock that has come from the processing of high grade ores. This might otherwise go to waste, but we can use bio leaching to get those last bits of copper out from the low concentration, low grade ores. And so the first thing that happens is this rock and the bacteria are mixed together. The area is often flooded with iron sulfate solution. This liquid is passed through a large colony of bacteria that will grow. And whilst it grows, reactions occur where the insoluble copper compounds are broken down and they become soluble copper containing compounds. These soluble copper compounds form what is known as a leachate solution. And that simply means a solution that contains dissolved copper compounds. This leachate will run off the low grade ore and it will collect in a tank. And this tank will have a solution containing copper ions. And from there, our final job is to extract these copper ions from the solution. And on this occasion, we again have choices. We could use displacement using scrap iron, where the iron is more reactive than the copper and it takes its place. Or we can use electrolysis, where the copper ions will be discharged at the negative electrode that they were attracted towards. In an exam situation, you might be required to describe the processes of phytomining or bioleaching, or you might be asked to describe why these alternative methods are necessary. And there you would cover the fact that the high grade ores are running out and maybe mention the scarcity in particular of high grade copper ores. Or alternatively, you might be asked to consider some advantages or disadvantages of these alternative methods. And so first and foremost, a big advantage is that they can utilise low grade ores in a way that the traditional methods can't. They aren't financially viable to do so. 
Additionally, they require much less energy to carry these processes out. And so that is going to be more sustainable because if you require a large amount of energy, then that will involve using a lot of energy resources, potentially fossil fuels. So phytomining and bioleaching use less fossil fuels and therefore they will produce less carbon dioxide as the energy is released from the resource. And having less carbon dioxide produced is of course going to contribute less to climate change, unlike traditional methods. And then a final advantage is that phytomining and bioleaching are in general less directly damaging to the environment. And what I mean by that is to have a copper mine, you have to dig a big hole in the ground. And that will, of course, directly destroy many habitats for animals. And additionally, there will be lots of vehicles moving to and from the mine to the processing plants. All of this is going to involve a significant damage to the environment. There are some disadvantages to these alternative methods as well, though. And if you're asked for just one disadvantage, my suggestion is that you talk about the fact that they are slow processes. For instance, phytomining involves plants growing and taking up these metal ions through their roots as they grow. Well, this takes a long time because even if you pick a plant that grows quite quickly, it will stay, still take a matter of months for this to happen. And bioleaching is also slow because the chemical reactions where the bacteria are breaking down the rock, they take time to occur and then there is a slightly more obscure disadvantage of bioleaching, which is that the solutions that you produce are toxic and that there is a chance that these solutions might run off the low grade ore and could end up in rivers. And that would, of course, affect anything that is living in the rivers nearby. In conclusion, we have high grade ores that have a high concentration of the metal that we want to extract from them. But these high grade ores are in short supply. One ore that is getting particularly scarce is copper ores and they will run out in a matter of years. And so we need to explore alternative methods to extract these metals. Two such methods that can be used to extract copper, but they can also be used to extract other ores as well, are phytomining, which uses plants, and bioleaching, which uses bacteria. These have the advantage of utilising these low-grade ores, but they also are more sustainable because they don't involve mining and they don't involve excessive amounts of energy resource use. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.